I went to see Godzilla today, and as the uh, interrupted title card said, there are going to be spoilers here. So some of them I'm going to get out of the way right away, because it was one of the main questions I had going in. So, here we go. Last chance. Spoilers. Now. Um, so in the movie, there were other MUTOs, or Kaiju, other than Godzilla, Rodan, Mothra, and Ghidorah, and I wondered what they were, couldn't find anything on them other than the little clips here and there. So right off the gate, let's get that out of the way. So there was, I want to call it, it was for all intents and purposes a mammoth, but its front arms looked like gorilla arms, and it had tusks. And then it didn't have a trunk. That's the best way I can explain it. A mammoth with gorilla arms and no trunk. Um, there was a spider. It was not a normal spider. It had lots of tentacles coming out of where its mouth would be. Um, there was another one that you see in the trailer coming out of the mountain. And the best thing I could think is that they wanted to have Anguirus in there. But they weren't sure what the redesign was going to look like. Hey, you don't really get a good view of it anywhere in the movie. So that's the best thing I can think. It was reptilian in nature, but still kind of rocky. And then, of course, there was uh, Muto, uh, designed exactly like the 2014 Godzilla. Uh, so that that's the first thing I wanted to know. The second thing, if you haven't seen the movie, is there an after credit scene? Yes, there is. And I'll talk about that in a minute or so. And what I think about it, what it might mean, what it leads into... Um, so, I guess the first thing, human characters, did I care? No, no, not really. I, I don't know that you're expected to, but they're there because they need to bring the story along, but most of them were pretty annoying in their logic and their thought process, and there's times you're supposed to be empathetic and you, you're supposed to feel or care for what they were going through, and you just really didn't. They, there was no redemptive arc. To hardly any of them if if you one started one way they tried to make you feel another way it just it didn't work um, the yeah the parent dynamic was it was forced it they were doing the best they could with what they were given I think but the script was not the greatest and I know we think about a lot of the old Godzilla movies is the script or the human characters what we're there for not really but they still have to connect the dots along the way like honestly the most emotional and touching scene in the whole movie um, comes between Ken Watanabe and Godzilla when he sacrifices himself to help Godzilla out. Um, literally, the most emotional and touching part was between Godzilla and and that character, and that's that's saying a lot. Um, the daughter's in peril a lot, and as a parent, you think those things would resonate. Be like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. I just, I never felt it. It just uh, was kind of flat. Um, so that leads me into the next point is that throughout the movie, Godzilla was saved too many times by others, uh, be it by other kaiju or the humans. Like, I, th I think four or five times he'd be down for the count or dead if somebody didn't come to his rescue to save him. And I get that the humans have to have a helpful component because we need to have that connection where, where we can have a point of view and that, that we're helping. Uh, but it, it just happens so many times. You're like, Jesus, is Godzilla really awesome? Or has he just been lucky all this time? And, and I could lean towards lucky. Um, so the, the, other, the other Rodan um, was, was neat. He, he wasn't in it a whole lot. Um, he was kind of like... Ghidorah's right-hand man for, for part of the movie. Uh, I think one of the better scenes in the movie was when he was actually fighting against the jets um, and, and the uh, the bigger aircraft that Monarch was using. That was a pretty, pretty good sequence. Um, so Mothra I think was the one that was shortchanged the most and she could have been so much more and again, spoilers, she, she gets into a pretty good drag down fight with Rodan at the end and she has this I'm getting back up moment and, and stabs him and he falls to the ground and we're like, yes, her heroic moment, she got to kill the bad guy that's been tormenting her and then she sacrifices herself. But we're robbed of that at the end of the movie when Godzilla is standing there doing his triumphant thing and Rodan walks up like, sup? 
and you're like, I thought you were dead. That whole drag down fight where Mothra took you out. And we were like, yes, that was awesome. Go Mothra. It just pulled the rug out of under you because there you are alive and Mothra is gone. So that was a little bit, a little bit frustrating. And then there was some trailer expectations of version, much like in Thor Ragnarok, when all the trailers showed Thor with his eye. And then all of a sudden in the movie, he's missing an eye at the end. Um, I thought we were having one of those moments because about halfway through the movie, the second time uh, Godzilla and Ghidorah start tangling, uh, Godzilla rips one of his heads off and he gets away and flies away. And you're like, holy shit, I haven't seen that shot where he's on the volcano roaring with his three heads or so on and so forth. He got his head ripped off. They totally messed with us in this trailer. Um, but no, it, it doesn't. And that kind of goes into a little bit of Ghidorah's origins. Later, he's on that very volcano, missing his head, and he regenerates it. So um, they talk a little bit about his physiology and, and his biology and how he's not of this earth, and they go through these ancient texts and find out that he's always not been from earth. He, he's, he's what's out of balance. He came from the stars, so basically he's an alien. So that kind of lines up a lot of different things from Godzilla mythology, that he was always from outer space. So that was kind of neat. Uh, the regenerating part was a neat twist. It was pretty cool to see. The effects were pretty good on that. Um, so some other callbacks with Mothra. There's Dr. Eileen Shen, and they're talking about how she's a second generation. Well, one of the characters asked her, so you're a second generation monarch, and she says, no, fourth. And it goes to this nice picture of four generations of her like her mother, her mother's mother, her great-grandmother, and so on. And they're all twins, and they've all been following the Mutos, but essentially they, they play a little bit of the uh, Mothra theme there, and that kind of ties back to all the Mothra lore, where they have the, the twins that sing to Mothra and, and get her ready to fight. And, yeah, so they, they deal a little bit with um, Hollow Earth, how Godzilla moves around so fast and then a little bit more on that where we see that the they were the original gods and the people living in the hollow earth uh, you know revered them and so on and so forth but that it was just a little bit it talks a little bit kind of tied into some of the creatures on Skull Island you know how they came from the center of the earth and they were wondering about it but um, it, Overall, the movie was awesome. I liked it as much as but differently than the 2014 Godzilla. Um, 2014 Godzilla put a, a lot more of scale. Um, you always felt like these things were bigger than life, and that's maybe because we didn't get the long shots and the, the wide angles and, and all of that. This movie took a little bit of that away. There's more spectacle, and watching the monsters go to town, uh, it was good. They, they did good use of their anatomy and how they would use their body parts. Um, to fight in the wild, I thought. I think they did a good job with Ghidorah uh, using his, his long necks as constricting devices and things like that. Um, but in the end, you know, if I had to, if we're doing a star rating, a four out of five, easy for me. I, I wouldn't give a five out of five just because I know you can't have two hours of monsters fighting. It would get, it would be overwhelming and it would wear you down. And I think they had, they had enough of the, uh, the action, but I think they could have trimmed up some of the human elements and shortened the film runtime overall. So when we get to the end credit scenes, um, you have the eco-terrorists show up in a little fishing village and they have uh, Ghidorah's severed head from earlier in the movie and the guy's all excited and he's like, yeah, we'll take that. So in that moment, I thought old school and I'm thinking Mecha King Ghidorah. They're going to take that head and strap it onto a, a nice body but it was it was pretty decayed and, and the flies were having their way with it so the next thing i started thinking about was more of the conversation of how is king kong going to be able to step up to godzilla where godzilla has been growing and becoming a big boy for ten thousand years how is king kong gonna you know measure up after 70 i thought well maybe they use the dna to make some kind of uh serum get them all hopped up and roid rage and, and ready to take on the big guy it might be a thought put that on your calendar right now today i'm saying they're going to use Ghidorah's dna to get king kong pissed off and huge to fight godzilla that's it um other than that in the credits you'd like to think that there are some subtle reminders that king kong and godzilla was coming up and i wouldn't say subtle as much as i would say taking a dull chainsaw and amputating your leg while making you watch and feel everything uh yeah they reminded us 
that that movie's coming out and to save our money and, and be ready to spend it and justify what they're building here. I'm going to justify it anyways because it's it's been a good way to build a universe and as realistically as can be done, they've been doing a good job. So those are my thoughts, um, the fun I had while watching this, and I hope you take something away from this and have a good rest of your weekend.